Washington when the crisis fever reaches a peak rare in peacetime. It gains momentum from a secrecy veil over official actions which keeps the nature of the emergency hidden until the last minute. President Kennedy confers with administration chiefs and congressional leaders, and the Capitol is alive with conjecture that he is ready to make a dramatic move in the face of the Soviets' intensified military buildup of Castro's Cuba, a threat to world peace. You can't get a, a normal car down a dirt track like this one, so we've taken this horse and cart to carry us deep into the Cuban countryside. We're heading for the hills over there. They look tranquil today in the summer sunshine, but 50 years ago, this was a key spot in the Cuban Missile Crisis, and we're going in that direction to see what traces we can find of that history today. Cuba. We've just found this path, which I'm told is the route that Soviet troops actually used all those years ago to bring their nuclear missiles into Cuba. It's completely overgrown now, as you can see, but this is the path that they used in the dead of night to make sure that they weren't detected by US spy planes. It was the move, of course, that brought the United States and the Soviet Union to the brink of all-out nuclear war. And this island, Cuba, was at the center of it all. Now we'll go to one of the missile launch sites. It's just up here. The R-12 missiles had a range of 2,100 kilometers. They could have reached Dallas, Chicago, Washington, and the nuclear warhead was 77 times more powerful than the bomb that destroyed Hiroshima. Imagine those huge missiles on our narrow little roads. You could move them at dawn, you could cover them, but you couldn't shrink them. In some places they had to remove lampposts and even houses to get past. And if they went through a village, the power was cut and no one could leave their houses. But everyone knew what was happening. They'd say, now the warheads are coming. So they knew. This was the site of one of the nuclear missile launch pads. It would have taken just two and a half hours to get one of the missiles here in place, armed with a nuclear warhead. This whole area was a Soviet military base. There were only a few Cuban soldiers allowed in here. But it was the missiles here, in this area of Cuba, that a US spy plane spotted on the 14th of October, 1962. And that's what launched the Cuban Missile Crisis. The evidence is incontrovertible. Aerial cameras in American military reconnaissance planes made remarkable photographs, such as this one of a medium-range ballistic missile base, which documents the Soviet offensive buildup in Cuba. The Defense Department says there are 8 to 10 missile bases in Cuba. This photograph shows a surface-to-air missile assembly depot. The aerial surveillance program was behind President Kennedy's momentous proclamation of the blockade against ships delivering offensive weapons to Cuba. Well, Jose has just brought me round to the back of his farm here, to uh, this area in the woods, to show me what he found when he moved in around 20 years ago. And just look at it. This huge heap of uh, concrete, these big stone arcs, were once the silo, the store, where the Soviet nuclear warheads were kept. Jose's been telling me that he had no idea what this was when he first moved in here. And he said now, though, the government wants to clear this area and make it into a monument to the missile crisis. After 13 extremely tense days, the agreement was finally reached that the Soviet Union would withdraw its nuclear missiles from here in Cuba. Back here in Havana, up at this military complex, there's the wing of an American U-2 spy plane. It was shot down over Cuba at the height of the missile crisis, and it's a really stark reminder of just how close the two superpowers really did come to nuclear war. There is also one of the Soviet missiles that was returned here to Cuba by the Soviet Union later and stands here as a monument to everything that happened during the missile crisis of 1962.